Now mostly in my video tutorials I mention watch out for tips and tricks throughout the video tutorial. Well today we're just going to do tips and tricks. I'm going to show you how you can drastically reduce your file size even after color grading using Color Director. Let's go! Now don't worry you guys, it's only got Power Director. We're going to bring the same file in there so you can recreate it as well. Yes! Now staying in Power Director, I'm going to show you how you can use folders and libraries that can really assist you when you're creating your own projects. Let's take a look. So as soon as I've brought my video file out of my camera, I bring it directly into this program. This is Color Director 365. It is part of the Director 365 suite of programs. Now, if you don't have the Director 365 and you only have Power Director, don't worry, a little bit later in the video, I'll show you how to color grade using Power Director. But for now, I'm going to bring my file into this because this, is, this program is basically for color grading videos. Now, if we go to the top left hand corner here, just above where it says stock content, there's a little plus sign on, on top of this little folder thing that you can click and import your videos. Or you can go to file and go halfway down where it says import your media files. Either way works. So I'm just going to click on this little file here and import my videos. Now I have my videos here in captures and you can see the two files here. The first one is the one directly out of the camera and the second one is the one that I have color graded here in this program. That's why the name on the end is called colored. I, I name my programs, as, my files as soon as I bring them out of the camera and what project I'm, I'm particularly doing. And then when I've color graded it, I give it the same name, but I add colored on the end so I know which, which is which. Now, just to take a quick look at this, this is the one out of the camera. If I just leave my mouse over it, you can see what it says. It's an MP4 video. Its size is 2.65 gigabytes and the length is 6 minutes 35 seconds. Now, if I take a little look at it, you'll see my shirt is, is, is really yellow. And that's because out of the camera, I have everything as a normal file. It doesn't really do anything special in there because I do a lot of photography and I like to keep it like this so that I can color grade it myself. Now, take note of the file size, 2.65. Now, this one is one that I've color graded and you'll notice that the shirt is a little bit more orange, which has got nicer color. My skin tone is much nicer. Now, if I leave my mouse over this, you'll notice that the file size is drastically reduced to 1.65 which really assists us when we bring this file into power director because we don't need to color grade it anymore and the file size is a lot smaller the length is still the same at 635 so let's bring in our original video so we can see how this works it's adding the clip information to the project and here we go. Now the video itself, if you look halfway down, you'll see that the type is H.264 ABC. And our output is going to be H.265. Now to edit this, we need to bring it down here into this banner, into this storyboard area here. So we can drag it by clicking the mouse, holding and dragging it down. Or if you leave your mouse over it, you'll see this little plus sign turn up on the left hand side. Click this once and it'll bring it down under the timeline. Now you'll notice that mine has got this little green little icon here. That means a shadow file has been done. So it makes it more easier to color grade this video. So now that we've got it in our timeline and the clip is down on the banner, if we go to the top, you'll see we were in our library. And then we've got adjustments and we've got effects in here as well. So let's go to adjustments. And basically all this is, is just a color adjustment. You can see you can do everything here. We've got white balance, tone level, all the things that you can normally do when you're color grading your photographs. You can color grade videos exactly the same way. Now I personally use color LUTs, which is lots um, lookup tables. I, I prefer to use these and then just mess around a little bit with the white balance. So let's go and have a look at what I have on LUT. Just click it once. So now you can see I've got these on my favorites. These are REC709 LUT files or lookup table files, LUTs as people say, and you can import your own and you can do some customs if you like. So now you can see that there's a tick added to the color lookup table. And now you can see the file is much nicer. Now I let my videos run constantly. I don't stop and start my video. I let it run all the time. Even so I see all the mistakes and everything because I give visual clues as to 
when I'm starting or when I'm doing something. So let me just run this along oh, to uh, somewhere there is about a good idea. As you can see, my hand is coming up. Let's just move this along. And there you can see um, I'm giving my hand signal here. That means I'm giving a visual sign that I'm going to start talking after this signal. So, so it's easier it's easier to cut out pieces once you see the hand signals. So there's something that maybe you could use in your own videos when you when you're creating them. Now also we've now that we've color graded, of course, you can add also other kind of things to the video. If you go to the top where we add adjustments, if we go a little bit further along and go to effects. Now you can see there's a lot of stuff in here. We've got light effects, lens effects, style effects. There's a lot of stuff you can mess around in here. I don't normally do this because this is basically just me talking and I just need it to look, <laughs> look good. <laughs> as good as I can get it for my age. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, but it's pretty good, and the the effects are, are stunning. They they really are. You can add you can add all kinds of wonderful wonderful things, um, brilliant stuff. Now to produce our file, once you've color graded it and you've got everything perfect, we'll go to the very top above the effects. You'll see it says export. We're going to click on export, and it comes up here like this. Now I have, and you'll see on the left here, it says select an output format. I have AVC H.264, which is what the video has come in as, as a 4K 25 frame per second. I'm choosing this one, this is H.265. This is a newer version of this format, and it gives you a better reduced file size. I'll change my country, of course, it's in the United States at the moment. I will change this, of course, to Finland. And... Um, because doing that allows me to go to 25 frames per second and I'll choose H EVC MPEG 4 4K because it's a, it's a 4K file and we're using it at 25 frames per second, which is what I brought it in as, only I brought it in as the 264, see? So I would choose this file like so. I'd go here to the three dots on the top left here and, and I'd choose the folder I'm going to put it in and produce it, give it a name and put colored behind it so that I know it's a color graded video, basically. And then I just click on export and then I would go and make myself some food and some coffee or sometimes if it's a really big file, I would just let it run through the night because this is going to take a little time. On my computer, it took at least three hours to do this. So now we've got it color graded, let's bring it into PowerDirector and let me show you some tips and tricks in PowerDirector. So now we're in here in PowerDirector, I've created a new pro project. I'm going to go to input my media file here from like you normally would. I'm going to bring in the original video and drop it here onto this, drop it down at the timeline exactly like you normally do. Double click this or click on edit. And then just go at the top left here where it says tools, click on color, and then you can color grade it as you wish. But now <laughs> you're very limited in what you can do here. Now there's a little caveat here that you might, it's a little bit disconcerting. I don't understand why it does this, but let me just drag this along. When you mess around with these, it actually plays the video along at the same time. So if I increase the exposure, look, the video starts to move as well. That is very strange. I don't know why it does that, but it, it's it's started to do that just lately. So, so if yours is doing that, um, yeah, just just keep going, color grading it, and and see. And if I drag my playhead along, does it still do it? See that it plays it, but you can color grade it like this. Let's take this to one twenty. Drag that band to the beginning, and let's play it along, and you'll see it stays at one twenty. It's it. So it, it it doesn't make any difference. It just. It just seems strange that it does this. So color grade your, your video in here and then export your video as you normally would. And then, of course, you choose your 4K resolution if you're using 4K, 25 frames per second. Here you can see the codec is HEVC, which, of course, is the H.265, which will make it a smaller file size for you. Export your video out. And then, of course, you don't need these anymore. Once it's exported, we can remove these and then bring in our colored one that we have already 
done and bring and bring it in and your smaller file size and by bringing in a smaller file size of course it really helps along with power director's memory usage now i've got this latest video project that i did a week ago the video inside the text with motion this is what it looked like when i was creating it now if you look down on the bottom here are where my tracks are, let's just move this up a little bit, you'll notice I'm using four tracks. Now don't be afraid to keep adding tracks here down on your timeline because there's nothing worse than jumbling everything up into three tracks and trying to figure out what's working, what doesn't work and, and everything else, especially if you're using other kinds of things If you, and then you decide I don't like that and you want to remove it. it moves things out and it causes timing problems on all kinds of things especially if you're using um, things like this control t like these little keyboard things that i've put in here Th these are very time specific where they need to be and so if i decided oh i didn't want that there and then all of a sudden all the timings out i'm gonna have to go through all these again so don't be don't be afraid to keep adding tracks down onto your timeline here. Now, if you notice down on the left hand side also, I have them all locked except for the last one because this is the last one that I was messing around with. And the reason I lock them is so that I don't accidentally move anything in my project because I like to keep things as they are. So if I need to edit something, I will unlock it, do whatever I need to do with it and then relock it put it back again so that i don't make any mistake a little bit later on when i come to keep messing around doing something else so don't be afraid keep adding tracks down here it, it makes it much easier it makes it much nicer to follow along what it is you're trying to do instead of having everything crunched and bunched up all into th two or three tracks now if you look at the top if let's drag this down a little bit now uh, the tracks out the way now if you'll notice here in my library this is very messy, but you'll notice I don't have that little side here, which is this thing, like other people have. You can see that. Mine only comes there when I put my mouse over it, like so. So if I go to titles, you can see, I can see all my titles. If I go to transitions, or transitions, even templates, overlays, it's the same, media files. And the reason it does this is I've clicked this little blue marker here. So all I do is I just put my mouse over it, it brings it out and then I can go and choose what it is I want to do. Put my mouse over it. Let's have a look at stock media. Let's go back to my media and you can see it's back here again like that. So I've got the titles. Put my mouse over it. Let's have a look at neon. Take my mouse out. We can see all those things. How cool is that? All you need to do is just click this. So let's go to back to media. Just click it once and you see it stays open. If I click it now, it'll go and then you just put your mouse over it and it'll stay there. And you can choose and you don't have to worry about. Now this is wonderful, especially if you're using a laptop where, where uh, screen estate is a minimum. This helps quite a bit. So you just put your mouse over, very, very nice. That's a very helpful thing. Now, the other thing is you've noticed this, um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in here and this is this is messy inside the library i don't normally do this i'm, I'm going to show you i've done this like this so that you can see how i mess around with this now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top right hand side here on our library file you'll see this filter section here search it and filter so you can choose videos only or images only like so now it doesn't really make sense to, uh, to, to do that. There's a better way to do this. So I'm going to show you this. Go to the three dots here. This says more options. Click it once. Now you can see you've got this view details so you can change the things that you can sort them out. You can select them. Now this is the two that we're looking at. Export library and import library. I'm going to show you how to use these. And we can also empty the library as well. But these are very, very important. I use these all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to create these. So let's click out. Click anywhere in your library in a free area like this. Right click with your right mouse button here and create a folder. I'm going to call this folder keys. Press enter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold and drag these pictures, these keys into this folder like this. I'm going to put them all in here. Now I do have several more. I'm just this is just so you can see how this works. So I'm going to put all my keys in there. Look how much nicer this looks now in your library because you've got the keys. All you do is then is just double click on the keys 
and it opens up and you can see them. So you don't have to keep going here, clicking on this and choosing. You can just double click this, choose the one you want, come back out. We can also do this for videos. So right click in the free area here, create a folder. Let's create these and call these intro vids. We'll call it that just for this, just for this video tutorial. Uh, these are lower thirds. This is my lower third here for this is subscribe. I'm going to drop this into my vids. I'm not going to choose this because this was this project specific. That doesn't really. There's my new intro. I'm going to put that in there. I've got my permanent tourist in Helsinki intro in there and my subscribe bell in there as well. The rest of these are we don't need to put them there. Now look how neat and tidy this is now. This is looking much nicer. And you just double click on these so you can and you can choose and come back out. This is really nice. Now here's the best thing. Let's delete these out because we don't want those. And, and choose that one. And save and get rid of those. So we've just got these two folders. Go to the three dots here. Export library. Now export library, this is your library. So whatever videos you have in here, if you use sound files and you've got them here, leave them in here because this is your library. We're going to export this and because if you use them in, in every video that you create, then it, it makes sense to have them available to you immediately. So let's export this library, which is this. Click on export. I'm going to call mine default like so, call it default setup. I'm going to click OK and save it like so. And that's it. And we can just delete those. Just get rid of those altogether. So we've got nothing here in our library file. So if you create a new file, a new library or whatever it is, click on the three dots, import our library, go find out where it is. Here's my default setup and click it. Now it's going to ask you if you want to merge it with your project file. So if you've already got a project open, and you'll click obviously yes, so it brings it in and adds it to those files. If you click no, it will just bring in those two folders and it'll get rid of all the other files in here. So we're, we're obviously going to click yes, like so. And there you go. There is our two folders that we created earlier with all our keys in and our videos. And we're ready to create our next video project. <laughs> How cool is that? Now, if bringing in your own import videos is not appealing to you, there's another way to do this, which which is pretty much exactly the same. Now, here in my videos, you'll see YouTube stuff. I've got a folder with key, keyboard keys and all my videos are kept here in, in my lower thirds. And I've kept, I've kept everything in their own folders. So basically, you just bring in those folders. You don't actually have to do this video export library and so on. You, you could go to here to import and import a media folder. Now, go to where you, you, your folder is. Mine, mine says keyboard keys. Click it once and just click on select folder. And it brings it in for you here. Here's your folder exactly the same as we did earlier with this um, export and import libraries. This is exactly the same thing. You double click it open and you have everything available to you. Now, I, I can import Another media folder, which is the lower thirds, which we just did. Same thing. Select folder. And there we go. And there are all my little video things already in there, ready and waiting. So you could do that as well. That is another way to, to keep this library uh, clear of clutter. <laughs> now, if you found this video tutorial informative and helpful, drop me a comment down below. Thanks for the tips. Also consider subscribing. Ring that bell to be notified every time I upload new content. Give us a like, it helps the channel along. Go check out my channel for all things Cyberlink and more. That's my rant for today. Have a great day. Stay safe, people.